Hi, this is A New Nigeria with Wale Oluwade. This is your current affairs program where we critically examine the strategic issues bedeviling Nigeria's developmental aspirations and boldly offer practical suggestions on building the Nigeria of our collective desires. Today's episode promises to be engaging and exciting. My guest is already here via Zoom to assist me in doing justice and also give depth and clarity to the topic of our discourse. As always, it's going to be evidence-driven, honest, bold, and a no-holds-barred conversation. So get ready as we begin in earnest. And now, let's get on with it. Today, we are continuing in our topic, uh, the role of political parties in nation building. Now, in a marked departure from 2019, when there were almost 100 registered political parties, most of these creating confusion and complicating the electoral management process. There are currently only 18 registered political parties competing for elective positions in Nigeria. However, in this fourth republic, only a handful of these parties have demonstrated the capability to win major elective positions, the PDP, APC, APGA, Labour Party, and a few others. Now, so why is this so? Indeed, why are political parties important in a democracy? What are the strategic roles of political parties in nation building? What challenges, if any, do these parties have to grapple with in the attainment of their vision, mission, and strategic objectives? Furthermore, are there lessons we can learn from other climbs? These are some of the issues we're examining today. We'll take this short break, and when we return, we'll get right into the conversation. Please stay with us. Welcome back. My guest is already here, Professor Ayolu Kotu. Let me give a brief introduction on Professor Ayolu Kotu. He's a PhD holder, a renowned political scientist and media scholar. He was the Obasikira Kayode Adetona Professoria Chair in Governance, Political Science, Department of Obafemi, Aolo, Obafemi Onobanjo University, or rather, Olabisi Onobanjo University, Agoiwe. Since May 2021 till date, he has been a director at the Obasikiru Kayode Adetono Institute of Governance, Department of Political Science, Olabisi Onobanjo University. As an academic, he has lectured at the Amadu Bello University, Zaria, University of Lagos, and the Lagos State University. He was also a visiting professor of international relations at the Obafemi Aolowo University, Ileife. He was also a distinguished professor and head, Department of Political Science, and Dean, Faculty of Social Sciences at Leeds City University. How are you today, Prof? Fine, thanks. And you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. So, um, le le let me pick your, your brains. The reason why you are here, you are the expert on political science, you know, so um, this is the season of politics, you know. So, Prof, um, can you please tell us what are political parties? What do you understand by a political party for the benefit of Nigerians? Well, they are basically associations or groups of people that have come together to presumably with clear and cognate related ideas and who are seeking a place in government or they are seeking to become government, mm. if I can put it that way. Mm. Okay. So um, how has our democratic experiment in this fourth republic, can you do an assessment briefly, sir? In, in like a minute, do an assessment for us in this Fourth Republic, what has been the democratic experiment like? Well, it's been topsy-turvy. Uh, somebody will say one step forward, two steps backwards. Mm. The, the democratic assumption has not been realized, has mm. no, or has, let me say has not been fully realized. Mm. We can assume that it's on its way to realization, but it's taking quite some time for its ideals to be realized. Mm. By that, I mean that the much talked about democratic dividends mm. are coming in trickles mm. very slowly to the people. You, you recall the joke about the Niger Delta militants. Mm who said that the reason they got enraged is because each time they check, they are told that 
uh, the policy dividends are still in the pipeline. Mm. And so they finally got exhausted and went about breaking the pipeline. <laughs> Since the dividends have not, been, have not reached them, so they so wanted they to, to find the they wanted the to find the dividends in the so pipelines. <laughs> the dividend of democracy can uh, be forced out of the pipeline. Mm. I, I don't know whether they have succeeded. Mm. Mm. Thank you, thank you, Prof. Um, we just concluded a series of party nominations uh, for 2023 elections. What's your take on some of these conventions that produced the party primaries that produced? presidential candidates and all of that. What, what's your assessment, Prof? Well, at another forum, I, I have quoted the comment of one of the aspirants who said that for his own party, uh, the party to which he belonged, that the, the primaries and conventions his own particular one, was obscenely monetized. Mm. And if indeed he had he withdrew, he did not any longer present himself as, as a contestant mm. because he says that the thing has been obscenely monetized. Mm. Is money not a critical factor in every democracy, whether America, UK, or wherever? Is money, is the role of money not important? Oh, yes, it is, to be sure. Um, there's a difference between the use of money and the monetization of a process. If, if you go back to the home unit, there, there are times you, you have to woo your partner, your, your son, your daughter with money, but monetization is a different kettle of fish. Mm. It means that the process is of, it has become what what we call uh, uh, it has become a bazaar, mm. okay, in which the highest bidder uh, wins wins the process. Mm. So what we have in Nigeria is monetization. Mm. Nobody can pretend that money is not important mm. in democratic elections all over the world. But when you monetize the process, it means that money assumes a disproportionate importance mm. in the process. It's mm. monetized. So mm. it's buy and sell. Mm. It, it has become a market mm. for trade, mm. you know, for, for bargaining. Mm. Brilliant, uh, Prof. The two major political parties. I had a party chairman here on this program and I interviewed him. And I was asking about the role and the influence of money in our democratization processes. And he said, okay, it is elected officials on the platforms of these two major parties who use state resources to, to, you know, to finance their party activities. Or the smaller ones, you have just a few money bags also bankrolling party activities. How dangerous is this phenomenon to our democracy? He said that uh, the larger parties are funded by public officials. Absolutely. And the, the smaller ones also by uh, money bags. Exactly. Did, did, did I get that right? You got it right, sir. You got it right. Huh? You got it right. You got it right, Prof. Uh, hello? Correct, correct, Prof. You're correct. I, I got it right. Yes. Okay. Well, well, yes. Somebody has to pay for, for something. And uh, that's, that's why I'm saying that even in the US, money plays uh, an important role in the funding of, of political parties. The world over, somebody must pay for advertising, somebody must pay for hotels, ancillary services, when people come for, for elections, no doubt. Um, of course, we know what used to obtain in Nigeria, that, uh, and most of Africa for that matter, that a lot of money is stolen from the public treasury in order to provide funds for political parties. Mm. What happened after the exit of former president, good luck, Jonathan, uh, was extremely revelatory mm. about that kind of, of funding that I'm talking about. Mm. But what has changed, really, 
I, I don't think that, that anything has changed mm. in that particular. What we saw during the last e exercise, which, which was concluded very recently, is that delegates were being openly bribed. In, in fact, somebody said that delegate, delegates or the job of delegates had become the most lucrative <laughs> in, in Nigeria in a long while. Wow. Because they were being given dollars and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, the election also reportedly was, was highly monetized mm -hmm. to the extent that um, voters were induced with, with raw cash. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's by one party or by all the parties. Mm -hmm. I think the case is probably in court. So the point I'm making is that when they say it's obscenely monetized, what they are pointing out is that fine, money must play a role. Mm. But when money becomes the preeminent factor mm. in an electoral process, then it should worry. Mm. It should worry voters. It should worry election managers. It should worry the government mm. who are uh, the monitors mm. or the, the midwives mm. of the process of transition. Mm. Mm. Good point, uh, Prof. Now, let me, let, let's, let's go further. Now, the alternative to a few individuals, either elected officials or money bags, funding political parties, by understanding of how it is done in America or in the UK or otherwise, are members fund political parties by their membership dues, contributions or levies or whatever. That's what I understand. Now, the counter narrative here is that there's so much poverty in Nigeria that you do not expect Nigerian masses who are suffering, you know, to still come and contribute to political parties. Now. To what extent is our low, very low understanding of democratic ethos in this country, to what extent has that contributed to um, Nigerians not willing to fund political parties and thereby being able to demand for accountability from political parties uh, managers? Very good question. You, you've raised an important point, which goes to the heart of the corruption of the electoral process. Mm. It's not only in the UK, even here in Nigeria, although we were very young at the time, mm. in, the day, in, in the days of Awulawa, Azikwe, and all that, mm. they told us, our fathers told us, that they had membership cards mm. for which they paid. Mm. They, were, they, they raised a moderate amount of resources money okay. to fund the political and electoral process, mm. you know, and some of the older people can still show you their membership card in those days. Mm. So the people, because in a democracy, the demos, that's the people, are supposed to be the epicenter. Exactly. But we are running a democracy without the demos. Mm. So there's a disconnect. Mm. Somebody just wakes up in his room, maybe he had a good dream, and he says, I want to be the governor of X state. Mm. I want to be a local government chairman. Mm. I want to be Nigeria's president. Mm. Okay? And, and there's nothing he has done. He may have held office previously, mm. but we don't know what record he has. Mm. Most of the people we have had are charlatans. Mm. Okay? They don't have any record worth the name. Okay, fine, they occupied the office, but how well did they do in the office? What goodies did they provide for the people? Mm. We don't know. Somebody came and said, I remember this last uh, primary that we talked about. The person said, I've been in office for is it 23 or 25 years. Mm. That is as long as the Fourth Republic. Exactly. He, he was a chief of staff. He was a local government uh, chairman at some point. He was a governor, and so he wants to be president. So that, that's his next logical step. Mm. Nobody is talking or debating mm. the quality of his performance. Mm. If these guys who have come out were so tremendous, then the country will not be in the mess it is. Mm. You know, the country will not be in the mess it is today. Mm. The mm. fact that the country is in a mess with people being killed, kidnapped, almost on a daily basis, suggests that there's something seriously wrong and frightening mm. about the quality of government. Hmm. The state of the roads, the 
long-running strike of the academic staff union of universities and other unions, you know, the frequent closure of campuses, mm. the health infrastructure in disarray, mm. you know, all of this show that governance has been very low grade mm. over the years. So whatever post these people held, I know there will be a few exceptions, but whatever post they held, they have not performed very well. Mm. But in order to bridge the gap, because people don't know them, they don't, they don't really care about them. So to bridge the gap, they bring out swaps, I mean, loads of money, you know, loads of money. Oh, this is your share. That is your share. So they've conditioned the people themselves to ask for money. Mm. So if you go to your village now to say, um, I want to be the next governor of social state. Prof, let, we'll, we'll take this short break and then when we we'll come back, we'll continue with our conversation. Please stay with us. Welcome back. Prof, can you hear me, sir? Yes. Okay. Nigerian political parties, how ideologically inclined are they in your own assessment? What roles? They are not, they are not even inclined at all. There, there's no question about how, how inclined are they. There's no, none of them has any ideology, wow. which is why, as you know, what they call party switching mm. is, is another disturbing and pervasive factor. Mm. Somebody thinks it will be governor here, he doesn't win the primaries, he switches to another party, and so on. Mm. And it has become a norm. Mm. It, it has become normalized, mm. normalizing the abnormal. Mm. Fine. Even in the U.S., people have switched parties. I can cite the names. Uh, Donald Trump has switched party before. Hillary Clinton has switched party before. A host of others, Ronald Reagan. But the proportion... Mm. is, in my opinion, what defines the system, mm. whether the system has become absolutely rotten mm. or not. In the U.S., you, you will have something like 12%. Uh, you know, in Nigeria, it will be something like 90%. Mm. So mm. that difference is critical mm. because the absurd has been normalized. Mm. That is what happens, mm. which means the parties are amorphous exactly you know they are they are they, they, you can't really put your hand on them mm. there's no clear identity mm. which is why they go to mess up in government mm. because they are coming in without ideal ideological pillar brilliant without, prof without mandate for, without for, what you call it for us to take safe time let me let me put in more questions so that Ask we can save time any one of them who are contesting now mm. what the ideology of their party is mm. And you are likely to get some uh, hodgepodge exactly. of ideas exactly. that don't really stick together, that don't gel. Exactly. And it's a shame. And <laughs> we need that's that's another place we need to move out of. Absolutely. And if you don't move out of, of it, it will take a longer time for Nigeria's recovery to happen. I agree with you entirely. Between a party delegate and an electorate, a voter, which is more important between the two of them? Well, the, the, the delegates are supposedly representing the, the, the people or, or groups of people. Uh, but of course, the, the voters are supposed to be the final arbiters mm. in, in the process. Mm. The party delegates are supposedly representative. Mm. However, however they, are, they are brought together or, or assembled. Mm. Well, I, Nigerians should go out and vote. If, if we view the process as evolutionary, then one can say that we are evolving, hopefully, hopefully to a better and more qualitative process mm. okay, of, of organizing elections. Mm. So hopefully some of the ills have been pointed over time will, will change, mm. will metamorphose into something better, mm. provided an attempt is made conscious attempt is made to work against them. Mm. Things can also regress. There's no law that says uh, the process will mutate in the right direction. Mm. The process can also regress. Insecurity in Nigeria is regressing. Uh, was it yesterday or the day before yesterday? Uh, one, a former colleague, a professor was, uh, was kidnapped 
and they're asking him, they're asking for a hundred million naira, you know. So was kidnapped, I think, somewhere in, in, in Kogi State, Professor Duro Adibwe. Mm. You know, and these things happen every day in Kaduna State. What we know is that towards the end of his tenure, there was a furore in the in the in the Supreme Court and leading to as you as we know against him, uh predicting that the judiciary is on the verge of collapse. Mm. So I I, uh, I think that that is a barometer, mm. you know, because judges are expectedly reticent. Mm. They have they are not in the in the public faith mm. in, the, in the public. They don't they hardly come to the so for them to say, okay. So for them to suddenly the manner they did in that dramatic manner mm. means that they, to, to to answer your question directly, I'm 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 not sure that history will be kind to him. Mm. Mm. Thank you very much. Uh, Prof, it was nice having you on the program. Thank you so much, Prof. And I hope to see you another time. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And that's the end of the interview segment. We'll take a short break. And when we come back, I'll come with my uh, closing statement. Please stay with us. Thank you. And here are my closing statements. Political parties are critical to the well-being of any democratic society as they help you know, to deepen democratic culture and ethos in the society. For political parties to achieve this, however, they've got to imbibe certain essential values, openness, transparency, discipline, excellence, respect for rules and processes, inclusion, etc. Political parties also ensure that nations do not, you know, descend into dictatorships or fascist enclaves. Yet, there are certain misconceptions or myths about political parties in Nigeria. Let me state three of these misconceptions, and thereafter, I will give uh, three recommendations as well to strengthening political parties' processes or practices in Nigeria. Number one, the first myth, number one, is that political parties exist merely to win elections. This is a pernicious lie. The second myth is that political parties can only you know, survive on the largesse of government officials or money bags. That is another you know, uh, wicked lie. The third myth is that only one man is needed to change Nigeria. Well, Nigerian constitution recognizes only parties and not individuals. And on the ballots provided by INEC during elections, it is political parties and not individuals that the electorates vote for. Now, what are my recommendations? Number one the complete elimination of illicit money in political parties' management and administration. Strict monitoring and enforcement of revenue generation activities and financial management of all political parties and their members to ensure you know, compliance with relevant laws. This is extremely important. Now, the empowerment, the second um, recommendation is the empowerment of the ICPC that is the Independent Corrupt Practices Commission, the EFCC, Economic, in, Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, and the Nigerian Police Force to investigate and prosecute illicit financing of political parties. It is criminal to use state's resources to fund political parties. You know, those who do so, however highly pleased, should be prosecuted and jailed, and the funds diverted must be restituted fully. The parties which also receive such funds, you know, must be barred from participating in elections for a number of years. This way, we send a very strong signal, you know, that we will not tolerate or condone illicit financing in our political processes. The establishment, the third recommendation, is the establishment of an electoral crimes, you know, tribunal or ECT. This is to determine the culpability of persons and institutions which violate the electoral laws. If we have the Code of Conduct Bureau and the Code of Conduct Tribunal, why not an economic, you know, um, an electoral crimes tribunal to complement the work of INEC, seeing that INEC is already overburdened. Now, why have I devoted much time to the goings-on in political parties in the last four episodes? Very simple. Nigeria is a democratic society, even if we're still very far from, being, from arriving at the desirable state. And political parties are front and center in the democratic processes. Besides their key function of educating the people on democratic ethos and practices, Critically, political parties produce the leaders at the various arms and levels of our government's architecture. It is therefore critical to pay more than 
a cursory attention to these parties, their internal processes, manifestos, plans, and policies, and how the persons they present to the electorate during elections are thrown up, you know. So, this is very important. On this program, we take this responsibility very, very seriously. Sadly, the majority of Nigerians, even the highly educated ones, know little or nothing about democracy. And this situation cannot subsist if we must nurture and build a livable nation for our children and children's children. On this program, this is a sacred duty we are committed to perform. I believe in a new Nigeria and it is possible. And those are my closing thoughts. That's the program for today. Remember to follow me on my uh, different social media handles. Subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can watch this particular video and other videos there at your convenience. Drop your comments also. I'd love to hear from you. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.